touch and in fact coming all the way through on the running rail to come through and lead at the end of the first furlong. So turn back time to the front here from Field de la Lune in second place. Maggie's Joy, the only one having her debut today. She's back in third place. The others, including Chelsea Annie, the back marker, have all had that little bit of experience as they now race out of the back straight, left-handed towards the home straight. Turn back time leading by just a length now to Field de la Lune in second position. Third place, Maggie's Joy. She's travelled well. And then in fourth is Chelsea Annie in the yellow and white silks, just being nudged along as the lead is uh, set by turn back time. The four fillies closely grouped together, though, as they enter the home straight, turn back time, half a length in front. Now Field de la Lune is ridden along, and the other two nudged along as well. Chelsea Annie on the outside, trying to make ground. Maggie's Joy still in touch, but she just needs to pick up a little bit now as they race on down to the final two furlongs. Turn back time being pressed now by Chelsea Annie on the outside. Field de la Lune back in third place and then Maggie's Joy the back marker and up front Chelsea Annie comes to the front she leads very narrowly from turn back time in second place then Maggie's Joy still running on Chelsea Annie turn back time trying hard to fight back Chelsea Annie's too strong though Chelsea Annie wins the opener from turn two with a way to the very far right lock down last towards the near side truth in jest is doing fairly well it's tamaska just ahead here with 100 yards left to go but pressed on all sides locked down last over to the far side right position and it didn't jump the first particularly well so 10 lengths separates first and last taking the grammar school bend the leader is the favorite bright eyed eagle second the last two occasions he's raced and in front by around four to Galloway Dulia in second position. The best turned out winner turned out by Lizzie Morton for Jake Coulson. Galloway Dulia in second spot. On the inside then is Kings Proctor and uh, Harry Reid. The white spots on a blue jacket. Two flights of hurdles on the wood side today. Over the first of them, not that fluent was uh, Willie Nilly. A bit closer together than on Saturday as well. These two flights over on the far side. Getting over the third. The back marker is still quote line direct. So continuing on, reminders for Havana Bay, just losing positions as Bright Eyed Eagle leads Galloway Dulia, Kings Proctor, and Dan's Cross, the Garthorpe point to point winner on the outside of Willie Nilly. They are four and five at the moment. Havana Bay is then following those, and then racing on the inside of that one is Rock on Sweetie. She got fast and quote line direct, just getting up on the inside of She Got Fast to relegate the Jimmy Moffat runner to the back marker position at this stage. So still over a circuit to go and running on to flight number four of the eight, leaving the wood side behind them. Hurdle just pushed out a little bit from the inside onto fresh ground as they get over it. And in a circuit's time, they'll be turning left. They go round once more, heading past the sticky toffee pudding shop. It is Bright Eyed Eagle. Hasn't seen another rival yet. And Aidan Coleman will be hoping it stays that way. Leads by three to Galloway Dulia and Kings Proctor. They are matching strides in behind the leader. It's then four to Willie Nilly. A similar distance then back to Dan's Cross. Just lost a little bit of ground. Becky Smith is improving on quote line direct on the inside of that. Now in sixth position as they now come to flight number five in the Unsworth's Yard Maiden Hurdle. And over that, the back three are becoming detached now. Havana Bay, Rock on Sweetie and She Got Fast are all struggling. The front six separated by maybe eight lengths as they take the bend towards the woodside for the final time in the opener. And it's still Bright Eyed Eagle in front of Kings Proctor in second position. Galloway Dulia is on the outside. Willie Nilly is in fourth. A little gap then to Dan's Cross and quote line direct. They are in five and six. So three to jump. Here's the first of them. Bright Eyed Eagle. Measures it well. Better than Kings Proctor. Galloway Dulia the outside. Willie nearly pushed along by Hughes. Dan's Cross still going okay in fifth, but six lengths behind the leader. Then quote line direct as they get over the second last. The other three are all still going and just uh, jumping the second last flight now, but well behind. So Bright Eyed Eagle is shaken up. Kings Proctor in second. Galloway Dulia can do no more in third. They are on from Willy Nilly struggling and Dan's Cross and quote line direct. It looks a two horse race now. 
And it is Bright-Eyed Eagle in front, off in second position, King's Proctor. Gets pretty serious, Aidan Coleman, on the leader. As they run down to the last two furlongs, King's Proctor is going to have every chance. Galloway de Lear, to his credit, is plucking on in third. And Dan's Cross is running a nice race in fourth as they run down towards the last. Bright-Eyed Eagle joined by King's Proctor. They land together. Galloway de Lear renewing his effort in third place and is still close enough as they come down the straight looking for a run up the inside. But King's Proctor has got a narrow advantage to Bright-Eyed Eagle. Eagle. Galloway de Lear is in third. Dan's cross back in four. Kings Proctor with the advantage. Galloway de Lear is continuing to stay on powerfully on the outside. Galloway de Lear comes to take the lead off Kings Proctor. And for Jake Coulson, Galloway de Lear is delivered to win by. They're off and racing Ballier. Market who was in play. Away. Own your stripes. Got an awkward start. Just shifted around left to right and is another at the back end of the field. So through the first furlong. Roman Encounter showing speed down the middle of the track. And together with him is Amazing Alba, the two of them racing wider park. Coropic is racing with Amazing Alba and just in behind those, Unashamed. Stronce is further back in company with Earn Your Stripes. He'll attempt to come from the back on Global Humor. Paul Morena now between runners and just bearing down on the leaders now with Balier being the back marker. And it is Amazing Alba who now shows out with the definite lead. They've got the two furlong marker in sight. Amazing Alba, Roman Encounter on the far outside Earn Your Stripes under heavy pressure. Now coming with the run is Global Humor to try and make it count. Stronce is down the near side running rail. Balier trying to stay on as well. And this is still looking very open with a furlong left to go. The new leader is Roman Encounter who's back in front narrowly. Global Humor now being on the wide outside to come with a run. Amazing Alba still there as well. Global Humor just in front as the line comes up, but he's not doing much. And Global Humor... They're off. Market in the play. Refreshments, handicap hurdle, long distance, extended three miles and one, and they'll jump 12. Bally Farsoon straight into the lead from aptly put in second. Liffydale Dreamer in third early on. And on the outside is ever so much the green and yellow hoops. And catch me if you can is the back marker as they continue their journey onto flight number one. Colleen Leonard and Bally Farsood with a two length lead over Jonathan England and Liffydale Dreamer. Going over the first, all landing safely with Apley Put on the inside, a winner here at the beginning of June and third to Liffydale Dreamer at the end of last month. Liffydale Dreamer just sitting on the girth of Apley Put. Ever so much, the 12 year old, 15 time winner is in fourth position and on the inside of him, is Theo Gillard on Catch Me If You Can as they head into the Woodside for the first time with Bally Farsoon, three lengths clear of Apley Put. Two flights of hurdles on this part of the course. And it is Bally Farsoon. Measures the first one beautifully to in second. Liffydale Dreamer Apley Put is on the inside of the mare and then ever so much and Catch Me If You Can. Flight number three, Bally Farsoon over in front and all of them foot perfect at that one. So in the lead is Bally Farsu. Five of his six wins have been on the flats and off a featherweight here today, getting plenty from the four that currently chase him. Liffydale Dreamer and Apley Put, they are sharing second spot with ever so much in third and then in, in fourth, I should say, and then in fifth position is Catch Me If You Can, carrying a penalty for a win just last week at Utoxeter and Sean Quinlan was aboard. Theo Gillard booked to claim five today as Bally Farsoon continues to show the others the way on towards the fourth obstacle, which will be the last in a further two circuits time. Bally Farsoon, Fidel Dreamer and Apley Put sharing second and they're followed by Catch Me If You Can and Ever So Much. Apley Put, the best turned out winner, prepared by Gemma Walton, trained by Jimmy Moffat, whose dad Dudley Moffat celebrates his 86th birthday today. Trained home counties to win a county hurdle, Scottish champion hurdle, Yorkshire Cup winner with Key to My Heart and stacks of races with uh, Deb's Ball. Happy birthday, Dudley. In second position, the Moffat runner here, aptly put, sharing it with Liffydale Dreamer behind Bally Farsoon. Bally Farsoon got that one wrong, the leader, but okay. Made a mistake though. Still leads by just under two lengths to aptly put and Liffydale Dreamer as they take the grammar school bend the back two still ever so much. He's been in winning action at Hexham as recently as last month and shares last place with Catch Me If You Can. So five of them, pretty much as you were, 
heading down the woodside for the second time and approaching flight number six of the 12 in the country refreshments handicap hurdle. Bally Farsoon, trainer Peter Wicks, the Barnsley burglars, the owners. Got over that in front, but they've landed right on his heels. He's not been quite so good at the last two. And Bally Farsoon is leading Liffydale Dreamer and Aptly Put. But only three lengths would separate the five of them. A lovely slick leap from ever so much on the outside under Richie McClernan. And catch me if you can just at the back. So they've taken seven. They've still got five hurdles to jump and make their journey around seven acres now with Bally Farsoon, his 10-year-old, still leading Liffydale Dreamer in second position with Aptly Put in third. Behind Liffydale Dreamer last month, can he close that gap today? Charlotte Jones in the saddle and the back two still ever so much and catch me if you can trained by Jenny Candlish as they take the turn and running on towards flight number eight, still over a circuit to go in our second race of the day. And Bally Farsoon, yet to be headed, but leads only by a length and a half with Liffydale Dreamer in second position. Her tongue just lolling out on the outside of Aptly Put. And catch me if you can, no move really from anything yet as they go by the Priory for the last time in this race. Just the back marker is ever so much. So going out on their final circuit, Bally Farsoon still leads the way, approaching the hurdle that he made a mistake at last time around. This time it's flight number nine. Bally Farsoon by two lengths still to Liffydale Dreamer and aptly put. And over the next one, Bally Farsoon not as quick perhaps as Liffydale Dreamer in second and rousted along on the run away from it again for a few strides. Bally Farsoon still leads. Around the grammar school bend to Liffydale Dreamer second, aptly put third. Not even five lengths separate them here in fourth. Catch me if you can. And Richie McClernand just waking up ever so much now in fifth place, just losing ground on the other four as they approach three out. So ever so much looks to have, have cracked here as it is Bally Farsoon trying to get the others stretched on the run to three out. But Liffydale Dreamer far from shaken off is a length down on takeoff and still a length down on landing. Catch me if you can and aptly put just getting a squeeze now as they run to the second last. Liffydale Dreamer looking ready to go here on the outside of Bally Farsoon. They are one and two. Catch me if you can has gone into third. Aptly put got one behind the saddle in fourth place getting out pace. They're well clear of ever so much. So one left to jump now and Bally Farsoon is driven in front. England is just starting to shake up Liffydale Dreamer in second spot to try and mount a challenge is still less than a length down on Bally Farsoon in third position two lengths back is catch me if you can and aptly put is another four away in fourth place so hard ridden bally farsoon liffydale dreamer is now going past on the outside and has taken the lead off bally farsoon one flight left to jump less than two furlongs to race catch me if you can is in third here's the last liffydale dreamer over in front of bally farsoon catch me if you can not quite shaken off in third in the colors of the worcester racing club liffydale dreamer leads into the straight bally farsoon is held catch me if you can is trying to catch the mayor Liffydale Dreamer. They run down to the last half furlong. All out Liffydale Dreamer. Catch me if you can is sprinting down the outside and catch me if you can as collared Liffydale Dreamer close to the finish under Theo Gillard. Catch Nicely away uh, and then in third place Rick Quinto's Rose showing up in third position. Mika Pritchow is just in behind that one towards the inside running rail and up with the pace as well as mind that jet. They seem to be going a strong gallop set by Langham, who's got this field well on the stretch as they head towards the end of the back straight. In six places, No Flies and Me, followed then by Zen Zero, who comes next. Legendas amongst those further back with Oriental Lily as they now race around this top turn. Covilia is uh, well off the pace at the moment, but will be hopeful they've gone too hard up front. And Kilconka is still the back marker, but it's Langham still letting loose, cutting loose by five lengths into the straight. This is Langham, Andrew Mullen. We'll see if he's got the tempo correct in a moment or two. Clop of the cop in second place. Just look at the distance back to the third, although Mika Pritchio now, only now, starting to go through the gears. Followed by Requinto's Rose, who's under heavy pressure. They're followed by Mine That Jet. Down the outside, Cavilio is trying to make some late progress on them, but very few have got into this, and they're already down at the final furlong, and now Clop of the Cop is putting the pressure up to Langham. In behind those, Mika Pritchio still with every chance, and they're followed by Zen Zero, who's staying on the best of the remainder. 
here. Late in the day, Cop of the Cop took over. Mika Piccio lunging very late. Cop of the Cop from Mika Piccio. Market in suspended. And there are. Market. Market in play. They'll jump 11 over two miles. And six, Native Choice is handy early on, but under a little bit of restraint on the outside Article 50. And on we go in between those two as they get over the first. Excalibur in fourth. And then on the inside, Red Okra ahead of Crate Hall Lad and Jelski held up with Rock on Tommy, Leanne's Lady and Grand Enterprise as they move quickly on to the second. And it is Native Choice and Ross Chapman leading the way to On We Go and Alison Johnson in second position. Ahead of Excalibur and Emma Smith Chaston, Article 50 and Dylan Hurst rode a winner here on Saturday on the outside, the red cap. Red Okra wearing cheek pieces on the inside, just next to the rail, with Jelski held up by Charlotte Jones in company with Craig Hall Lad, Rock on Tommy, and Aidan Coleman. One of the two greys in the race, Excalibur being the other, and Grand Enterprise is currently at the back of the field with Leanne's Lady and Danny McMenamin. As they've taken their first two and heading around seven acres, it is Native Choice, trained by Rebecca Menzies and owned by John Wade, coming on towards flight number three of the 11. Native Choice to uh, On We Go, ran quite well when fourth here last month. On the inside of the course is Red Okra, looking for a first win at the 27th attempt today. Sean Quinlan on board for Chris Grant. Excalibur is next on the outside of Red Okra. And wider still is Article 50. These are the first five going by the Priory and the Racecourse stables for the first time in this race. Craig Hall, Ladd and Jelski are following. A little gap then to Rock on Tommy, Leanne's Lady and Grand Enterprise at the back as they're now getting very close to flight number four. The one flight of hurdles over on the roadside today. Native Choice met that spot on to On We Go in second place. Article 50 a little bit slower then Excalibur and Red Okra on the inside. And then Jelski, the top one in here. Crake Hall Lad, the best turned out winner. Prepared by Amy Crook. Crake Hall Lad, number nine. Previous winner here. As they're heading into the Woodside Straight now. And they've completed their first circuit in Division 1 of the Molson Cores Handicap Hurdle. Native Choice continues to lead. On we go. She is in second position. Article 50 on the outside of Excalibur and Red Okra. They still make up the... Chasing trio, getting over that. Jelski landed in sick, the head of Craig Hall Lad and John Kington. And then Rock on Tommy, Leanne's Lady and Grand Enterprise here is number six. And all getting over it safely, separated by 10 or 12 lengths with a Native Choice. Continuing to cut out the running. Here's Chestnut with On We Go on the outside. And then Article 50, keeping wide on the course. Excalibur was runner up at... Market Raisin last month, still close up with Red Okra on the inside. They share fourth, followed by Crake Hall Lad and uh, Jelski moving perfectly well at this stage. Still over a circuit to go. Rock on Tommy still makes up part of the rear trio with Leanne's Lady and uh, Grand Enterprise and Jamie Hamilton last of all. First run of the season for Grand Enterprise today. As they come to number seven, in another circuit's time, it'll be the last. And all over that soundly with Native Choice continuing to lead. On we go in second spot. The lead's probably stretched to three or four lengths now as they go by the Sticky Toffee Pudding Shop and head out on this final circuit. Article 50, Red Okra and Excalibur are still in third, fourth and fifth as Native Choice just threatens to get away and has gone four lengths clear. Craig Hall Lad is still in sixth place with Jelski on that one's inner. Leanne's Lady, Rock on Tommy, Grand Enterprise pushed along in last place as they run to flight number eight of the 11, the fourth last and really starting to pour it on. It wasn't a particularly good jump from the leader Native Choice, but it hasn't stopped him running and he's opened up by about seven now under Ross Chapman. Native Choice with a clear advantage going around the grammar school bend. Make it eight lengths. On we go is sharing second with Red Okra. And Excalibur getting up on the inside of On We Go. They are second, third, and fourth. Jelski is next with Craig Hall Lad. Article 50 is drifted back through the field. Rock on Tommy making some ground, but Native Choice is eight lengths clear. Here is the third last. Fired at it and jumped it well. Native Choice, On We Go, just out jumped there in second by the improving Rock on Tommy and Jelski. They are both making ground on either side of Excalibur. Leader gets over the second last. Uh, Terrible shape made by Rock on Tommy on the outside when trying to close ground. Jelski 
is in hot pursuit now, and this leader's quite hard ridden, and Jelski is getting closer, so is Rock on Tommy, and the game is looking up very quickly for Native Choice. Having burst into a clear lead, he's now struggling to get home, and it's Jelski and Charlotte Jones, Aidan Coleman and Rock on Tommy that take it over here. In third now is Craig Hall Lad staying on, then Native Choice and Excalibur, and on we go. Jelski on the inside, on the outside is Rock on Tommy. These are the front two, both flat out. Jelski to Rock on Tommy, Craig Hall Lad trying Trying to stage a rally in third. It's probably got four lengths to find, but plugging on well clear of Native Choice. The final flight, Jelski got over it in front of Rock on Tommy. A blunder at the worst time for Craig Hall Lad in third. And it's Jelski tired, drifting over towards the rail, but with a widening advantage here and only a furlong to run. It's Jelski and Charlotte Jones for Jimmy Moffat, continuing to have such a, a wonderful season. Six or seven in front. Very tired, Jelski, but he's got a healthy advantage and it's going to be a win out. Market, and, uh, are, market is, in play. The Molson Coors handicap hurdle, nine runners, and early on, brief acquaintance and uh, for Jim, both wearing headgear, the first two to show, running to the first of 11, with uh, Kitty's Cove, the green and black, on the outside, folks like us, and an early reminder for brief acquaintance, got the blinkers on, and uh, Sean Bowen trying to get him to uh, apply himself, put his mind on the job, and he gets over the second, and it's a little bit more lively at that one. Brief acquaintance on from Four Jim. Craig Starr, the dark blue with the yellow checks on the sleeves, the amount of Brian Hughes on the inside of Mr. Yates in the purple. Kitty's Cove on the outside, followed by folks like us. The back three early on are Elusive Red, just ahead of Arctic Quest, and Snowy Burrows and Ross Chapman. Snowy Burrows, she is in last of all. As they leave the woodside, heading around seven acres, and the leader is Brief Acquaintance, running from... £31 out of the handicap for Jim, the top weight and a winner here at the end of May and over fences at Hexham since then, sits in second position and they're followed by Mr Yates getting over their third, Craig Starr on the inside and then Kitty's Cove and Danny McMenamin and Harry Reid on Folks Like Us on the outside, on the inner is Becky Smith on Arctic Quest, the back two are Elusive Red, Lorcan Murta and lastly Snowy Burrows going past the Priory on the roadside and they've jumped three of their 11 here in the second division of the Molson Coors handicap hurdle and it is brief acquaintance to uh, for Jim in second and Mr Yates and Mitchell Bastian in between Craig Starr and Kitty's Cove front five separated by about three lengths and just over another length then to folks like us as they lift off at the fourth and uh, on the inside of folks like us is Arctic Quest pushed along is elusive red towards the back and the best turned out winner elusive red turned out by uh, richard nickel elusive red one from last and in the final position is snowy burrows heading into the woodside straight then and it is a brief acquaintance in front of for jim in second in search of his seventh career victory today craig Starr is then on the inside for donald mccain and racing on the outside of that one is mr yates and wider still is kitty's cove Getting over what was their first. That time it was number five. In sixth position continues to be folks like us. Then elusive Red Arctic Quest and Snowy Burrows. The second flight on the wood side. And Brief Acquaintance gets over it safely. With a lead of a couple of lengths to for Jim in second spot. 
giving 26 pounds to the leader and getting closer to him with Mr. Yates in behind with Kitty's Cove sticking to the inside is Craig Starr. First five followed by folks like us and then Elusive Red and Becky Smith in no hurry on Arctic Quest at the moment and being followed all the way by Snowy Burrows leaving the woodside behind them and on the turn towards flight number seven still over a circuit to go and a brief acquaintance leading for Jim slightly more closely bunched now as they run towards their next obstacle and it is brief acquaintance going to take off first and all taking that nicely enough a little bit sticky in last was at Snowy Burrows, passing the exits of the village now, and through the two miles and a furlong start, and going out on this final circuit, Brief Acquaintance still leads for Jim in second. They'd only be seven lengths first to last, though, with Mr. Yates maybe just shading third at the moment, Craig Starr and Kitty's Cove in close proximity, Elusive Red then on the outside of folks like us, Arctic Quest, Snowy Burrows still in last place, but a tightly packed field, as a brief acquaintance is fired into this flight and measures it well. Took it nicely by two to for Jim in second. A few jockeys starting to push in behind now. Craig Starr on the inside is worked on. Mr. Yates is still in third place in the purple with Kitty's Cove. The pushed along Craig Starr. Arctic Quest is just creeping a little bit closer on the inside of Elusive Red. Snowy Burrows has relegated folks like us to be last. Folks like us has weakened as they now run towards three out and driven in the lead is Brief Acquaintance for Jim coming to move alongside now. For Jim takes over. Coming towards the third last for Jim leads into it to Brief Acquaintance. Mr. Yates in third looking like he's got a little bit left. Arctic Quest creeping closer under Becky in fourth place. And then Elusive Red on the outside, weakening is Craig Starr and Kitty's Cove has also lost positions as Snowy Burrows picks off one or two. So they've only got one flight left to jump now, but four furlongs or so still to race. For Jim now leads the firmly driven Mr. Yates. Brief Acquaintance is backpedalling. Arctic Quest is struggling for a little bit of room. Snowy Burrows and then on the outside is Elusive Red. For Jim leads them here, but Snowy Burrows is staying on very well to press for second with Mr. Yates. Then Elusive Red and Arctic Quest quest as they make the run towards the final two furlongs and the last flight for Jim is leading but here comes Snowy Burrows from last to second at the moment then Mr Yates Arctic Quest has gone fourth the final flight coming up for Jim a brace of greys a big jump on the outside from Snowy Burrows not the jump of a, a tired horse as they make the turn into the home straight but for Jim is holding Snowy Burrows at the moment and is kicking on again for Jim has gone on by three and it is for Jim with Snowy Burrows in second can't lay a glove on the leader and they are on from in third position Mr Yates for Jim in front it's familiar territory and for Jim strikes again at Cartmel for Jim makes it a S race market in play slowly away Mary's Diamond and Shalia the two who set what looks to be a strong early tempo with Vintager back in third place three lengths back Tinker Toy is in fourth another length and a half then to Volatile Analyst and Nicholas T is our back marker. So now Shalir has got to the front. End of the first couple of furlongs, Shalir leads a well strung out field in today's feature, the weddings at Western House Hotel handicap. Shalir by a length, Damaris Diamond in second. Vintager in third place, racing along in the stripes. Tinker Toy not far behind in the orange sleeves. Then a little gap further to Volatile Analyst. And at the moment, the remarkable Nicholas T will be at, need to be at his most remarkable to get back here. And he's a way back in last place. They turn for home then. Shillier first into the straight from Mary's Diamond. Vintager has closed up to be right on their tails now. Tinker Toy and Volatile Analyst, they are not far behind. They'd be six lengths then back to Nicholas T in last place. They've got two and a half furlongs left to go. Shellier has made every yard to this point. In behind them, the one on the bit still is Volatile Analyst in the two shades of brown. They're followed by Mary's Diamond, who's still giving everything. Vint Vint Vintager hasn't still quite got there. And then the back markers include Tinker Toy, now who's faded out of contention with Nicholas T. Shellier is so tough here, still in front from Mary's Diamond. Vintager coming with a run. Volatile Analyst didn't find a great deal. Up to the line they go. This is close here. Shillier joined by Mary's Diamond. Market Mary's Diamond suspended. Gone past. Market in play. Limited handicap chase starting over on the wood side and jumping 14 fences. Annie Moore leads present and counting towards the first of them with Get A Reason, the grey and gold in third place. And no comment 
pops over in fourth under Tom O'Brien as they move on quickly to the second. On the left is Annie Moore. On the right, the uh, slicker jump and landing in the lead, present and counting. So present and counting under Brian Hughes, leading the way to Annie Moore and uh, Connor O'Farrell in second position, now sitting two and a half lengths behind the leader and about three clear of Get A Reason in third. And then in fourth place is No Comment. Went very close over hurdles here at the end of May. And first run back over fences for well over a year. No comment. The early back marker as present and counting a 20 length winner at Perth at the beginning of the month, for which he's gone up quite a bit in the handicap, leads the way and is opening up by about five to Annie Moore and Get a Reason. Get a Reason just up on the inside of Annie Moore, going past the exit to the village. And no comment is in fourth place and present and counting with a now uncontested seven or eight length lead passing the Priory and running on to the two fences over here, plain fence and then an open ditch. And present and counting, a winner of four of his 11 starts and never out of the first three. Present and counting, soars over that, beautiful. Not quite so good in second, just got in close. Get a reason onto an open ditch and present and counting, took a bit more ground out of them there over that. No comment has jumped through into third and Annie Moore, having been up there early on, has dropped back to be last. As present and counting, leading by 12 lengths around the Grammar School bend and into the Woodside, a commanding lead over Get A Reason and Nathan Mosscrop in second. Hexham winner at the beginning of May and a close second to a, a stable mate of the leaders. Good Mayor Bannockstown glory at the beginning of June. Over the water, reached for that, the leader present and counting. Over that, still with a 10 or 12 length lead over Get A Reason, no comment and Annie Moore is becoming detached over the second fence on the Woodside and over in front, present and counting. Jumped it very well. Annie Moore is getting well behind now. A circuit behind them and getting over at the seventh. Present and counting is really giving the other three a uh, big task here. Has gone on by about eight or nine lengths to get a reason over in second. No comment is right on his tail and about 15 lengths clear of Annie Moore. So present and counting with another circuit in front of him in the hands of Brian Hughes on the 30 winner mark for the season. And leading by 10 or 12 to get a reason in second place, the best turned out winner, groom Zoe Doyle winning her second prize of the weekend, with Rebecca Menz's runner. And get a reason is in second in the race itself at the moment, followed by no comment. Tom O'Brien on 994 career British winners. And he's about 15 lengths behind the leader in an attempt to make it 995 here. Passing the Priory, present and counting. A long way in front of Get A Reason and No Comment. And it's about 15 back to the Mayor Annie Moore. Six fences left to jump, heading towards number nine. Present and counting. Ten lengths clear. Coming into the first of them. Present and counting. Over it neatly. Get A Reason in second. No Comment in third. Quickly on to the open ditch. Leaders a fence clear of Annie Moore, who's just cleared the ninth. And over that ditch, Get A Reason still took it in second, ahead of No Comment in third by two lengths, but still ten adrift of the runaway present and counting. What a dominant display this has been to this point. But he's still got four fences and then a half mile run in in front of him. But he's pounding on, present and counting, for Donald McCain with a clear lead. It might even have extended as they come towards the water. Here's four out, present and counting, sails over it, Get A Reason Takes it in second. No comment is on the inside. They're almost level here. Is three out for present and counting. Over. Still ten lengths in front. No comment landed in second. Just ahead of Get A Reason. Annie Moore is just coming to it now. Two out. Present and counting. Brian Hughes over. And they still haven't made any impression. No comment's gone into second. Get A Reason is in third. Here's the last fence. Present and counting. He was okay. Wasn't his best jump of the round, but it was... Perfectly serviceable, more than good enough, and now he's driven in the lead. No comment is going to try and wear him down on this long run. And Brian Hughes is now getting animated in the saddle on present and counting, but still has a 10-length advantage from no comment in second, who's doing his best to, to close. Get a reason is well held back in third, and Annie Moore still going in fourth. So present and counting in search of his fifth career victory. Has got two furlongs to last from no comment, who's... Flat out in second, get a reason third. Annie Moore is in fourth place. A look round from Brian Hughes there, just coming to the home straight and the final furlong just to see 
how much of an advantage that he's got, and the answer is still a commanding one, to no comment in second. Running down to the last half furlong in its present encounter, he won by 20 lengths at Perth last time. Not sure it's going to quite be 20 today, but it's going to be a resounding victory, all right, for present encounter. What a dominant success under Brian Hughes for Donald McKay. Untidy starts, Flying Moon not best away, Aaron Moore with him and at the back end of the field great kalachi the slowest one out of the gates but up front it's late arrival who leads the field with tilsit for company tilsit a little keen alongside him on the rail they're followed by merry court in third place after merry court is red bond red bond is too clear then to wild thunder and tommy g with aaron moore and wild hope slightly further back racing towards the inside of flying moon and Great Colacci is our back marker. The leader is Tilsit in these early stages of the staycations at Western House Hotel Handicap. And he's rather gone on here, Tilsit, by a length and a half, together with late arrival. They've opened right up, four lengths clear, these two, of Merry Court in third place. Red Bond is in fourth, looking untroubled. Tommy G next, Aaron Moore towards the outside. Wild Thunder and Wild Hope, they race close together, but well off this searching gallop as they come into the home straight. At the back end of the field, Great Colacci and a ridden along Flying Moon with much work to do. Tilsit still leads here. Under pressure is late arrival. Merry Court in third place. Might just fancy his chances in the cheek pieces. They're followed by Tommy G out on the wide outside and Flying Moon starting to stay on. So too is Aaron Moore. This could change late and dramatically. Entering the final furlong, Merry Court is the leader. Tommy G is out after him now. Tilsit back in third. Flying Moon in fourth. They dash for the line. Merry Court holding Tommy G as they go up towards the line. Merry Court. Another there are Mark market in place extended two miles and a furlong and Tonto Spirit rousted along early a set alight by Connor O'Farrell to try and take the early lead running to the first of 12 fences and Tonto leads to Ardera Cross in second position Sword of Fate and Derek Fox in third the dark blue with red spots Lermu's Legend Valley Vic Baru and Check My Pulse the back three here's the first Tonto Spirit to Ardera Cross the winner of this race two years ago quickly onto an open ditch and Tonto Spirit is over in front of Sword of Fate on the inside of Ardera Cross, a horse who William Young has done so well with, won numerous races. Tonto Spirit around the grammar school bend with Ardera Cross just coming to try and press him again. The favourite and top weight in third position is Sword of Fate. Ballyvick Brew and Brian Hughes then on the inside red sleeves of Lermu's Legend, just won his last three at Foss Lass and at Check My Pulse in the green on the outside. So Ardera Cross has headed Tonto Spirit over the water jump, leads by about a neck in the hands of Sam Coulton, coming on towards number four, another plain fence, Ardera Cross and Tonto Spirit side by side, no hiding place here. Sword of Fate is in third position, has already won here this season, just last month, and over that in third ahead of Lermu's Legend, Valley Vic Baru is just struggling a little bit to go this pace as they get over number six, the final one in the back straight, Valley Vic Baru just shaken up by Brian Hughes at the back of the field. Would be 12 to 15 behind Tonto Spirit and Ardera Cross. They continue to trade blows, heading around the turn at the end of the Woodside Straight. Sword of Fate is just sitting a few lengths off the front too. Maybe three or four, and it's a couple then back to Lermu's Legend. And then Check My Pulse, another best turned out winner for Rebecca Menzies today. This one prepared by Jackie Richards. is just sharing last place with Ballyvic Baru. So half of the jumping is behind them. They've got six fences to jump and another circuit to go in the Lakes Luxury Lose Handicap Chase. Tonto Spirit, six times a course winner. If he were to make it seven today, he would equal the achievements of Harriet Graham's Soul Magic. Chance of a, a record equaling victory, but our dear across isn't making it easy. He's matching strides and just going on by half a length to Tonto Spirit. And they're much closer up in behind. Sword of Fate and Lermu's Legend Coming towards number seven, Ardera Cross, Tonto Spirit, one and two. Lermu's Legend now sharing third and improving all the time. Here's an open ditch, Ardera Cross, with Tonto Spirit reaching for it, but jumping it really well on the inside. Just has the advantage again as they go round the grammar school bend. Tonto Spirit, Ardera Cross, Lermu's Legend, Sword of Fate in behind. In fifth position is Check My Pulse, and Ballyvic Baru is the back marker. Four to jump, and then the long run in. 
Connor O'Farrell just stoking Tonto's spirit up on the inside of Ardera Cross as they run to the fourth last. Ardera Cross leads Tonto's spirit with Lermu's Legend in between them. Here's the third last. Ardera Cross over first. Lermu's Legend has quite easily gone into second. Tonto's spirit looks like he's struggling a bit in third with Sword of Fate coming up on his outside. Ardera Cross, Lermu's Legend. Sword of Fate has overtaken Tonto's spirit. It's not happening today for the local legend. He's dropping back as they come to the second last. Lermu's Legend joins Ardera Cross. One left to jump. Sword of Fate is in third. Check my pulse in four. Lermu's Legend leads Ardera Cross over the last. Sword of Fate third. Check my pulse in fourth. And then Tonto Spirit five ahead of Valley Vic Baru. But it's Lermu's Legend. He's not at Foss Lass today. But is it going to be the same result? He's in front. Ardera Cross running a, a very big race. Coming right back to some of his best form here in second position. In third is Sword of Fate. Check My Pulse is trying to get into the picture in fourth, but has several lengths to five. Lermu's Legend still with the advantage here. And Sean Bowen hasn't pushed too many buttons inside the two. Sword of Fate is chasing hard, trying to lay a glove on the leader. Ardera Cross can do no more in third. Then Check My Pulse into the run-in. And Lermu's Legend, bottom weight here, is two lengths in front, seemingly... Market in play. Mutiny as they settle down and come up to pass the stands. Prominent towards the near side, military star over towards the inside, ridden up big challenge to dispute between horses. Is Sheila, also close to the early pace towards the outside, is collaborating and they're chased to the bottom turn by Get Back in Paris. As they near this right hander, that'll bring them across the bottom of the track. Taking over is big challenge going on by a couple of lengths. Military star up on the outside of Sheila, collaborating is in fourth spot. And they're followed by Get Back in Paris in the blue and white stripes, followed into the far turn by Mutiny. Behind Mutiny is Approach the City, then Blackstone Cliff, and the final pair as they head up the far side, Anja, and bring up the rear is Zack Attack. As they head on to the five furlong point, Approach the City, going along in front for Sam Ewing, and just about a length in front, disputing second spot, Sheila, Joey Sheridan on the inside, towards the outside is Military Star and Jack Cleary, and they're tracked by collaborating Gary Carroll in fourth spot, a couple of lengths then, to get back in Paris and then mutiny, and behind them is approach the city. Then Blackstone Cliff and Anja's attack remains at the back as they head on, nearing the three furlong point and heading for the top turn. In front is Big Challenge, pushed along, but leading by almost two lengths, followed in second as they head for the top turn by Sheila, collaborating is in third and behind them with the blue cap is approach the city as they make the top bend and head for the straight less than two furlongs to race big challenge chased by sheila collaborating is trying to stay on towards the inside staying on is get back in paris but as they turn in over a furlong to race big challenge tackled on the near side with the yellow cap by sheila there's a few lengths to get back in paris well inside the final furlong on the far side big challenge sheila challenging get back in paris in third 50 yards to race and over on the far side big challenge will hold on and win for Sam Ewing from Mark. Second. Time of seeking out of breath held up plum last early on as they go around the first couple of turns, taking them into the back straight. So as they make their way round the turn, the advantage held by Lord Torinaga taking the field along from Fahad. Franny Garth in behind in third against the rail, followed a length away by Furlin Fur. And after Ferlin Fur is out of breath, who is still our back marker and being very patiently ridden. So that bend unfolding, they now straighten up, down the back, and the leader, Lord Toronaga, Fahad now just allowed his head, creeping a little bit closer, but Lord Toronaga almost sensed him there and went again with, in third place, Framley Garth. Framley Garth ahead now of Ferlin Fur, and the back marker is still out of breath as they have now just over one mile left to run in this Air Sunday Market at Air Race Course Apprentices Handicap. Bradley Harris, the young apprentice, dictating the terms here on Lord Toronaga, with Fahad in second and Framley Garth in third. Two lengths then back to Ferlin Fur, and another two to our favourite out of breath, who's still in last place. Now they race on with just over six furlongs left to run. The leader, Lord Toronaga, attempting to make all from Fahad in second place and Framley Garth to the inside in third. Still just over one length to Furlin Fur. 
and a very quietly, patiently ridden out of breath, is last of the five runners as they move now back towards the home straight. Turning in first then will be Lord Toranaga. He's led throughout, still a length in front from both Framley Garth and Fahad towards the outside. Furlin Fur close up in fourth and now out of breath, closer again. Still fifth and last, but within three and a half lengths of the leader, Lord Toranaga, who moves down the straight then for one final time this afternoon here at air. Lord Toranaga leading from Fahad in second, out of breath now, trying to make his ground on the wide outside of Ferlin Fur, who's ridden along. Framley Garth still in behind Lord Toranaga, who has definitely upped the ante. Lord Toranaga, the one to catch, now with out of breath, giving chase in earnest, closing in in second place, but ridden to do so. Framley Garth next, Fahad's dropped away, so too Ferlin Fur. Lord Toranaga still in front from out of breath as they go up towards the line now. Lord Toranaga out of breath coming with one more crack at him this side. Out of breath just from Lord Market Toranaga. suspended. Then, one and a half furlongs. 18 fences. Dr. Robin leads to the first of them. Hasn't gone tearing off in front of Dress of Success in second. Mance Raider is then on the outside just shading William of Orange for third. They're side by side almost, a couple of lengths to Empire de Mould and the same again to Lit Lighter, the early back marker as they are now reaching the first, Dr. Robin put in a, a short stride and was comprehensively out jumped by Dress of Success as they move on towards the second, Dr. Robin's going to lift off first again but once more Dress of Success just a little more fluent but Dr. Robin has the advantage again on the run around the bend to Dress of Success in second, two and a half lengths to Mance Raider and Danny McMenamin on the outside of Joe Williamson and William of Orange. Brian Hughes and Empire de Mould in fifth. Lick Lighter, Adam Wedge, last of the six. The light blue and purple. Dr. Robin and uh, Sean Bowen, the winner of this race two years ago in 2019. Won three times here that season. Dr. Robin, dress for success, is uh, jumped the first three beautifully on the outside. Charlotte Jones, as they now have three more plain ones to take on the Woodside this time around. And all taking it safely, separated by six or seven lengths, with Dr. Robin just in front of Dress for Success. And uh, Dress for Success, really enthusiastic again at the obstacles, coming to the next one. Head slightly on one side, but over that, in the lead to Dr. Robin in second, Mance Raider and William of Orange, the next two. Empire de Mould is keeping his own counsel in fifth place, last month's entry winner. For James Ewart and the backmarker Laura Morgan's Lick Lighter, Dr. Robin leads them around seven acres, just keeping a little way off the rail to Dress of Success, which won the best turned out prize. And uh, turned out by Darren Moffat, Jimmy Moffat's Dress for Success. Won his last two races here, and like a winner earlier on in the card, present and counting has gone up £10 for the last of them. Will it stop him following up in second position? At the moment, behind Dr. Robin, passing the Sticky Toffee Pudding Shop on the roadside. And in third, William of Orange and Mance Raider, Empire de Mould, very much as you were with Lick Lighter, winner of two of his last three at Southall and Perth, is last of the six. Dr. Robin by a half length to dress for success in second, coming to fence number seven of the 18. Everything jumped twice more. Dr. Robin to dress for success. Mance Raider and William of Orange close up, open ditch. Dr. Robin, his best jump of the race perhaps so far. Back to both a little slower there. Uh, Empire de Mould and Lick Lighter. Dr. Robin leading dress of success. And when he won here last month, I think I'm right in saying that was Charlotte Jones' first winner over fences. And in second position at this stage, dress for success. Two in third, William of Orange, Mance Raider, Lick Lighter and Empire de Mould the back two. Not much to choose between them as they run to the water jump. Number nine coming up now. Dr. Robin, over to dress for success. Mance Raider then in between Empire de Mould, a, a shade closer. But there's not a huge amount of ground, only five lengths first to last. Dr. Robin over another plain one to dress for success. Leader really warming to the task. Dr. Robin, dress for success in second. Two more to take on the wood side this time. Front two both equally fluent with uh, Mance Raider in third. This will be the last next time around. Dr. Robin. Over to Dress for Success, William of Orange. Won 11 races, William of Orange. On the inside of Mance Raider. And then Empire de Mould, who's been a 
a victor nine times throughout his career and lit lighter last of the six but well in touch heading around seven acres with a circuit to go in the psr marquee's handicap chase dr robin still leading dress for success in second position nicely bunched up field nance raider following to the outside is empire de mold just a shade more competitive with william of orange on the inner in a circuit's time they'll be turning left the back marker continues to be lit lighter as they head out on this final circuit about to run past the priory and the lead is still with dr robin to dress for success keeping tabs on him in second position but the whole field separated still by less than five lengths dr robin dress for success empire de mold on the outside much handier in between Empire de Mold and William of Orange's Mance Raider. Lick Lighter is still last of the six. Fired at this one, Dr. Robin jumped it well to dress for success. The open ditch coming up and Sean Bowen's just trying to set this horse alight now, Dr. Robin. Just pecked a bit there at the ditch with dress for success in second, only a length away. A length and a half then to the three line across the course from the inside out. William of Orange, Mance Raider, Empire de Mold and Lick Lighter is right on their tail. Six runners then turning into the back straight onto the wood side for to jump before the run in and Dr. Robin continues to lead the way to dress for success in second position. Empire de Mold, William of Orange. Empire de Mold going well on the outside. Here's the water. Dress for success took it up there to Dr. Robin with Empire de Mold on the outside. Lick lighters right up amongst them now with Mance Raider. William of Orange drops out to be last. Dr. Robin also beating a retreat as they run to the second last. Dress for success is the leader to Empire de Mold. Lick lighter is threatened just in behind with Mance Raider. Dr. Robin looks to be out of this in fifth and clear of William of Orange. Here's the last. Dress for success is over. Three of them in close proximity. A look over the shoulder from Charlotte Jones. She'll see a confident looking Adam Wedge on Lick Lighter. Brian Hughes likewise on Empire de Mold on the outside. He's going to have to really battle here. Dress for success. Mance Raider in fourth going around the inner. Dress for success pushed along in the lead there. Off the rail with Lick Lighter coming under pressure and so too Empire de Mold. Dress for success is finding in front. He's got on by two to Empire de Mold and Lick Lighter. The cupboard looking bare on Lick Lighter as Dress for Success continues to pour it on. Look over the left shoulder from the rider, turning into the straight. Less than a furlong to go now. Dress for Success with Empire de Mold within a length and a half. They're leaving Lick Lighter behind, running down to the last half furlong. Dress for Success is in front of Empire de Mold, trying hard in second, up in the weights. And to fly in the wind and didn't, he's better drawn as well. Let's get up to Peter O'Hare. They're off. Market so in play. Was JJ's Ascot as they come up to past the stand with the river in the yellow and red, the early leader. Moss Tucker close up, flying Hawaiian stand side in yellow and green on the rail. There's Crystal Black in between horses Manuel, a couple of lengths then to Zaydabad, followed towards the first turn by JJ's Ascot towards the inside of Barn Hill Rose and no hassle at the back as they make the first turn. Continue away from the stands. Witham River, the inside, Flying Hawaiian has gone up on the outer to be within half a length of the lead. Moss Tucker tracks them, close third. Manuel in fourth. They go on two and a half lengths or so in front of Crystal Black. And then Zayda Bad as they turn and head down the far side. Witham River on the inside, a narrow leader under Shane Cross, Colin Keane and Flying Highway close second. About two lengths away in third, Moss Tucker, Billy Lee, tracked in fourth by Manuel Ronan Whelan. In fifth position, as they head past the five furlong points, is Crystal Black and Ashinor. A break then of about three lengths to Zaydabad in the final trio, JJ's Ascot, followed by Barn Hill Rose, and at the back of the nine runner field is No Hassel. Less than half a mile to race, Witham River, Flying Hawaiian, Moss Tucker, improving up on the outside to dispute the third spot is Manuel, and they're chased a few lengths back by Crystal Black and then Zaydabad as they continue on with over two and a half furlongs to race, heading for the top turn with the river flying Hawaiian, a close second, Manuel makes headway around them, Moss Tucker just behind him and then Crystal Black and they're clear of Zaydabad. Running downhill towards the straight, with them river, Manuel trying to close on the outside, flying Hawaiian weekends, Moss Tucker the inside and around the outside behind him is Crystal Black, but as they straighten up, it's Witham River, Manuel, Crystal Black down the outside behind the Moss Tucker. Well inside the final furlong. Crystal Black picking up well on the stand side and sweeping through to take over. 
I'm going to learn Crystal Black. Here off. Market in place. This is the Campbell and Rowley handicap hurdle, and there are 13 of them to jump the eight flights. Snowed in, running in this race for the sixth consecutive renewal, is disputing with Pass Russia. The favourite Poutine and Plus De La Concord just sitting in behind. They're sharing third ahead of Darkest Day on the inside of Jack Hammer. Two by two as they get to the first. Behind those, Monash and Burnage Boy, the light blue. The colour change, dark blue with a white horse. That is two blondes. And these are being followed by Milado. Rip Rocks, Paddy OK, the best turned out winner. Well done to Danny Fexton. And the back marker in the race at the moment is Strong Team. As they've headed around the grammar school bend, past Russia and Jonathan Bewley, leading Sean Quinlan and Snowden, the 12-year-old. Veteran of well over 100 races, these two, side by side almost, with Place de la Concorde and Ross Chapman sharing third with the favourite Patine and Aaron Anderson. Jumped that very well. Jack Hammer in fifth in the top weight, Darkest Day. Blue and yellow of Monash and Nathan Mosscrop next in the field, ahead of two blondes and the steward. And then Burnage Boy over the third flight, the second on the wood side. Milado makes up one of the last three with strong team. And Rip Rocks, Paddy OK is driven and getting reminders in last spot. About to race left-handed and snowed in. Sean Quinlan on the outsides of Pass Russia. These are the first two. And followed by Patine just on the outside. He finished a very good second. He had an almost impossible task against Alkamar on Saturday. He won under the trainer, Jess Betty, at Market Raisin previously. Aaron Anderson with the task of trying to go one better today. They've got a circuit to go in a... Another circuit's time, things will be getting very serious as they run towards number four. Pass Russia snowed in, Patine over in third, Jack Hammer is following, taking a hold. Plus De La Concorde losing his position, being driven along on the inside and now getting reminders from Ross Chapman. Burnage Boys improved under Alan Corley, the light blue on the outside of Monash in company with Jack Hammer. As they go past the Priory for the final time today, in midfield is Darkest Day, that's racing in seventh. Two blondes and Brian Hughes on the inside of that. Then Charlotte Jones looking for the treble for Jimmy Moffat. What an amazing season they're having here. The steward, the black and yellow, just starting to improve a bit. Milado following. And then strong team. Rip Rocks, Paddy OK, well behind as they've just jumped the fifth. Another mistake by the retreating, or a mistake by the retreating plus De La Concorde. Pass rusher to snowed in. Jack Hammer and Patine right in behind with Monash. Well bunched now. And then Burnage Boy just out wider. These are followed by the steward. Darkest day under some pressure. Two blondes hugging the inner. The back three or the back four. Milado strong team just toiling a bit. Plus De La Concorde well clear of Rip Rocks. Paddy OK. Three to jump in the Campbell and Rowley handicap hurdle. Coming to the first of them. Pass Russia snowed in. Burnage boy so much closer. Jumping in second. Patine in behind with Jack Hammer up the inner. Monash snowed in's losing his pitch now. The steward coming into it. The black and yellow under a little bit of nudging on the outside. Here's the second last. Pass Russia, Jack Hammer, Patine is now being driven. Monash is there with Burnage Boy, the steward on the outside. Monash still held on to by Nathan Mosscrop. One to jump then, all changing. Patine is, is certainly on the back foot in about fifth or sixth, as it is Monash that's come through to head past Russia. Jack Hammer the inside. Patine is responding to pressure. He's not beaten yet. He's in now third again. The steward is on the outside. Then two blondes ahead of Milado and Burnage Boy's effort has petered right out as it is Monash that leads the way, going well for Rebecca Menzies. Monash in front by two and a half to pass Russia. Patine and the steward in third and fourth, then two blondes and Milado. Monash coming down towards the last. Monash, he was not fluent, but he led by two. In second position, pass Russia. Two blondes staying on. Patine gets a bump from the improving two blondes. And the leaders now looking vulnerable in front. Monash, pass Russia is coming. Two blondes looking for daylight. Patine pounding on down the outside. Then the steward and Milado is up for grabs here. They run inside the last half furlong. Two blondes, pass Russia. Patine on the outside under Aaron Anderson. Getting in front where it matters. Patine has won. Oh, he's flying this horse. Marking. It's suspended. A lot of satisfaction from that. Second. Market in play. Losing a few lengths at the start. Razdan as they head up in front of the stands. The blue colours moving through. Kojin on the rail is a rugged day. Astrophysicist in the white on the outside. Catherine Cree just behind him. Nepali next with Ben Siegel and Santa Florentina. A break of a few lengths to artistic work. And a further four to Razdan at the back of the nine runner field. As they go into the bottom turn. 
Lawrence ahead right-handed. Ruggaday leads for Wayne Lorden, followed in second by Fujin Shane Foley. Catherine Cree, Gary Halpin is on the inside in the orange colours third. Astrophysicist next for Niall McCullough, followed by Ben Siegel on the inside. Chris Hayes towards the outer is Nepali Gary Carroll just behind them. The red and yellow of Santa Florentina Declan McDonough. A couple of lengths break to artistic work Rory Cleary and still at the back is Razdan and Colin Keane as they head up the far side. They're approaching the halfway stage directly up to the stands. Rugged day by a length and a half to Fujin, Catherine Cree. Just tired now on the inside of astrophysicist. Ben Siegel is behind them towards the inner, Nepali the outer. Santa Florentina between them and artistic work and Razdan a bit closer, but still the final pair. As they head on, three and a half furlongs to race. Rugged day, Fujin within the length of the leader. Astrophysicist on the outside of Catherine Cree and there followed by Santa Florentina trying to improve, scrubbed along. Ben Siegel also driven the inside Nepali to their outer and then artistic work and Razdan as they head to the top turn. Over two furlongs to race, rugged day with challenging on the outside Fujin a couple of lengths then to Catherine Cree. Ben Siegel is behind him, staying on from the back is Razdan and they've gone away from the remainder. As they swing in with over a furlong to race, Fujin has come through to lead with the nose bend. The orange colours of Catherine Creed on the outside, Ben Siegel. Rugged Day is weakened. Fujin over on the far side, staying on stand side, Ben Siegel, and they fight it out. With less than 50 yards to race on the stand side, Ben Siegel. Razdan finishing well on the bob three-way Market goal. suspended. Ben Siegel, far side, Fujin. Near side, Razdan, very close for the places. And back and forth was Catherine Creed. It's a tight one, isn't it? Ben Siegel in the center. Maybe just we'll have a look at the still or at the, at the slow motion camera whenever we see it. But it's been a hell of a race either, whichever way it's gone. Ben Siegel stayed on really well in the center. Razdan came from either fur even further back. Here we go. Seven. Seven. Ben Siegel second won it. Place. Market suspended. And a further photo for second place. Aloha. They're off and racing for the free market on at in play. Handicap one mile, three and a half furlongs. Neon a little bit slow into stride and also slow into stride. The top one, New Heights, as they race through the first furlong. El Monte is the current leader. Moving forward to press for the lead is sister and brother in yellow and red. Yellow colours towards the outside belong to Capricious, who is just ahead as they race towards the uh, intersection of Scheherazade, who's also in that chasing group. Artemis Sky, New Heights, they just track Liz Dara at the moment as they race through the first half mile. Still the one that's detached by just a couple of lengths is Neon. A Diamond Bay is one from the tail as they make their way across the intersection and race towards the final mile of the contest. Sister and brother in yellow and red, El Monte with the striped sleeves, Scheherazade between the pair and Capricious in the noseband. They're the first quartet as they make their way towards the bottom bend. Liz Dara comes next just ahead of New Heights and Diamond Bay. A couple of lengths to Artemis Sky now and Neon is just beginning to lose touch with the others as they make the turn at the far end of the race course. And as they do so, the advantage is with El Monte, who leads sister and brother by a length with Scheherazade in third. Capricious is in fourth place as they make the bend, with Liz Dara racing in fifth at this point in proceedings. Uh, then behind these, the blue jacket of New Heights, just ahead of Diamond Bay. Artemis Sky is closed to get in touch with the leading bunch, but Neon is still detached as they make the turn up the home straight. Half a mile to travel in the lead El Monte, sister and brother and Scheherazade towards the right-hand side. Pushed along is Capricious, Liz Dara is up the centre of the race course, then New Heights, Diamond Bay and Artemis Sky as the leaders make their way now down towards the final three furlongs. El Monte, Scheherazade on the right between the pair, sister and brother, then Liz Dara, Diamond Bay up the near side, New Heights is beginning a charge and making significant progress under Rob Hornby. Two furlongs to go, wide across the course, sister and brother, Liz Dara towards the right-hand side, New Heights under the near side rail towards the left-hand side, Artemis Sky. Sky staying under the near rail as well and Diamond Bay up the centre is also making good progress. Out in the lead it's Liz Dara who has the advantage from in second place Diamond Bay coming after the leader and they've moved on. Half a furlong to travel. Liz Dara being pursued by Diamond Bay out in the centre. Not much in as they go for the line. Diamond Bay seeing it out stronger beats Liz. Kit in play. Restricted maiden stakes. And a good start by Jen's Gift, also showing early dashes. Smullen towards the inside. Filingdale missed the kick completely at the back of the field. 
Through the first furlong they go, small and yellow jacket, nose banded. Jen's gift almost upsides in the pale colours, three deep of those Texas man with the red cap. They're followed by the black and orange of Ionian Sea and then prodigious blue with the orange cap. Little gap to Taladora in the blue and yellow colours towards the back of the field with Al Mood and the slow starting Filingdale in the pink and pale blue checks, is, uh, quarters I should say, is the overall back marker. Up towards the final couple of furlongs they come and Smullen sent on here by Kevin Start. Opens up by a length to Jen's Gift racing second. Ionian Sea gives chase. Texas Man is next out wide then prodigious blue and Taladora. Al Nood well back so too Filingdale. Still there Smullen but he's pulled the persuader on the leader and he's drifting into the centre of the track. Near side Ionian Sea is running on well on debut they go inside the final half full on ionian sea has hit the front and ionian sea market in play one off the rail towards the near side tally is close up and barman moving through on the rail ideal pal towards the outside as they settle down good battle on for the early lead with ideal pal up on the outside for wesley joyce just leading tally the inside chris hayes a break of a few lengths to the yellow colors of barman keen mcredmond in third position Ides of August, Colin Keane next, take a chance, Jimmy in the red and white, Nathan Cross on the outside of Still Standing and Shane Foley. As they head away towards the turn, it'll bring them into the back straight. They have more than six furlongs to race, and Ideal Pal leads by a length, Talik second, about two and a half lengths then, to Ides of August up on the outside, to edge into third, Barman the inner, and at the back. Still standing the inside of Take a Chance, Jimmy, as they head down the far side, they're nearing the five furlong point. Ideal Pal by half a length on the Wesley Joyce, Talik. Close second, Chris Hayes, little over two lengths away to the next pair. Ides of August, the outside of the noseband, Colin Keane, the yellow and red. Of Barman, Keane, McRedmond, and they're followed a little over a length back by Take a Chance, Jimmy, Nathan Cross on the outside of Still Standing and Shane Foley. As they continue with about three and a half furlongs to race. Still up front, Talik up on the outside now of Ideal Pal and their chase by Ides of August. Barman is on the inside, take a chance, Jimmy, and then still standing. Running up to the top turn with over two furlongs to race. Talik on the outside, Ideal Pal. Ides of August makes headway around him, take a chance, Jimmy. Wider still, behind him still standing, trying to close, and then Barman. As they near the turn in, Ides of August has come through to lead from Take a Chance Jimmy on the outside. Still standing is coming through behind him and an ideal pal and Talik, but inside the final furlong. Ides of August out in front, Take take a Chance Jimmy in the centre of the course. Not much to choose between them. Less than 100 yards to race. Take a Chance Jimmy on the stand side, getting up to win it for Nigel Slevenin. It's fast deal up towards the outside. Pitchcombe and the red and yellow colours of James Park Woods also race in a forward position just ahead of Headland. Towards the inside of the track, we have Sir Joseph Swan as out in the lead, it's Fast Steel who spins the turn. So Fast Steel has the early advantage from Pitchcombe racing in second place. In third is Black Medic with in fourth place Headland in the grey sleeves. Then James Park Woods who is on the outside of Sir Joseph Swan. Midfield for Grey Fox on the outside of Woodcock. Accrington Stanley is towards the back, and the last two are Torre Dorado, and last of all is Liberated Lad. So making their way up towards the final half mile. Fast Deal racing on the inside of the grey pit of Pritchcombe, who is in the white stripe on his nose. They're being followed through in third by Black Medic in the cheek pieces. Sir Joseph Swan comes next. Grey Fox trying to improve on the inside of James Park Woods. Then Accrington Stanley as Pitchcombe and Fast Deal commit and go for home with two and a half furlongs to travel. Black Medic in third place. Then behind these Grey Fox towards the outside Accrington Stanley in green and yellow. A Grey Fox switches as well to come and challenge with James Park Woods. Just behind these Torre Dorado stays on. Pitchcombe, Grey Fox attacks with a furlong to go. Black Medic, Accrington, Stanley, then James Park Woods. Grey Fox has the advantage. Toro Dorado under the near side staying on stoutly in the closing stages. Toro Dorado and Grey Fox going for the line together. Very close between the two. Grey Fox by a neck beat Toro Dorado. Market Accrington suspended. James pa Good start. Mutta Wapa who's away well also breaking well. Jamira Prin uh, uh, Signora Princess I should say and towards the inside. Toronto Star is away well. So too Sam's Call under the near side and uh, the far side rail. Near side Kabib is prominent. Uh, tucked in behind those races Van Gerwen racing in company 
with at this stage Birkenhead and then over towards the far side Jamira Bridge uh, that's racing in company with the white cap of Signora Princess centre field then towards the inside young Tiger Burton Wood is well back so to his up it's Mick Mutterwap as well back so to Tom's Rainbow it's Toruntum Star inside the final two the pink jacket kicks on by a length Kabib coming out of the pack the yellow and purple towards the near side also kept going over on the far side is Sam's Call behind that dark shot is followed through in behind by Navajo Spring but it's now Kabib who's taken over for Ella McCain inside the final half but on they go Kabib is blasting away here and racing up towards the line Kabib will land the spoil and settling down close up no thanks driven to the front towards the inside of the white cap is Cliara as they continue on towards the top turn no thanks in the lead followed by Cliara up on the outside is Assam not far off them Happy Amran around the outside anti Audrey towards the inner as they turn and make the approach to the straight. No thanks out in front. A few lengths clear at this stage as they approach to turn in from Liara. Assam the outside, Happy Amarin just behind him, Auntie Audrey. Around the inside is Eagle Reel, alongside that one Dream Wisely. It's there outside Miss Louise and then Boom 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 and extends the own Baby Bellini, Strip Light, Macaban City and bring up the rear. His ex-girl, as they pass the winning post. No thanks, taken on for the lead now by Happy Amarin. They're about three lengths in front of Cliara on the inside with the white cap. Assam is close up on the outside in four to break up a few lengths to Miss Louise getting a little bit closer. On the inside behind them is Auntie Audrey with Dream Wisely and Eagle Reel and then boom, boom, boom. As they head away, feel well strung out. With less than seven furlongs to race, no thanks by a length, Happy Amarin second. Cliara. Assam the outside and four to break of almost four lengths to Miss Louise. Behind them as they head down the far side, Dream Wisely, Anti Audrey, Boom 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 in mid division the outside, and then Baby Bellini and Eagle Reel and Extensio. Macaban City strip light and a break to X Girl at the back. Passing the five furlong marker. Directly off to the stands, no thanks. By a length and a half. Happy Amarin is second. In third is Cliara. The outside and fourth is Assam, chased along behind them. Miss Louise with Anti Audrey, then Dream Wisely, Baby Bellini driven, then Boom 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 on the outside of Eagle Reel. As they continue on towards the three furlong point, no thanks still leads. Hattie Amarin driven along now in second. Ciara is in third, Assam four, and break to Miss Louise as they head to the top turn. No thanks by over a length. Hattie Amarin in second. Behind that pair as they reach the two furlong pole is Assam trying to stay on. Then Cliara and Miss Louise, a break to Auntie Audrey as they head to the turn in. No thanks, still out in front. Happy Amarin under pressure in second. And third is Assam, straightening up with over a furlong to race. No thanks, Happy Amarin out in the centre of the course. Behind them is Assam and then Miss Louise. No thanks on the rail leads from Happy Amarin staying on stand side. They'll fight it out. Well inside the final furlong. Happy Amarin on the stand side getting up. Happy Amarin gets up to win. Market no thanks, suspended. Vamos lá então, depois das, das coisas analisadas, foi um dia mau, menos estarei a banca, foi quase 100% da banca. Um, na prática, tive mesmo muitos erros, mesmo, mesmo muitos erros. Muitas vezes isto, o meu dia começa a correr mal, a partir do momento que eu nas primeiras corridas tenho um, um red maior e acabo por ir tentar ir buscar o dinheiro, arriscando mais arriscando mais nas corridas seguintes para ir recuperar <coughs> nesta melhor tive um, né, tanto nesta como nesta nesta aqui foi porque foi a última corrida de todas no tipo foi um um, um lei não é que geralmente eu, quando perco muito dinheiro é em lei quando melhor quando estou na banca geralmente é sempre em lei Uh, nas, nas vezes que até agora estourei a banca foi sempre além se calhar é um indicador de que quer dizer qualquer coisa não é? Uh, aqui foi devia ter fechado devia ter assumido o prejuízo mais cedo devia ter assumido o prejuízo mais cedo para não falar de quando bateu cá em baixo devia ter fechado a dois para além desse erro uh, muitas vezes quando um cavalo está na disputa ele nunca passa ao lado de 20. Ele parece que está ali ao lado de 20. Ele vem para baixo, vai acima, 
está a gala de 20. E eu quis assumir o prejuízo acima de 20. Quis, acho que foi na hora de 40 que fui assumir o prejuízo. E como é óbvio, não bateu. Não bateu lá e acabou por vir para baixo e eu acabei por não, simplesmente não fechar naquela, restia, naquela reza de que ele podia vir a, a perder. Aqui também foi muito mal porque foi um lei não sei quando ele estava com a cabeça, mas foi um lei ao segundo favorito. Logo, era muito provável que corresse mal. De resto, foi três normais, aqueles quatro, quase uma stake de ganho, quase uma stake de perca. De resto, foi tudo muito normal. Só o resultado final é que não foi nada normal. Mas pronto, isto está com muitos altos e baixos. A semana passada, esta semana, a ver se consigo... De ir para a frente consigo estabilizar isto, senão vai ser complicado. Vou ter sempre muitos piques e muitas descidas, porque não é nada bom. Ando muito dia, acabo por trabalhar para aquecer. Pá pessoal, até amanhã, fiquem bem.